Heroes of the Vietnam Generation by James Webb, former Secretary of the Navy. Many famous people, Tom Brokaw, Chris Matthews, and Steven Spielberg used their voices to talk about the heroes of World War II while downplaying the patriotism of the Vietnam generation. In truth, men in uniform who served their, during Vietnam thought they were honoring their father's World War II service by continuing to fight the communist battle. The most accurate poll of their attitudes by Harris in, 19, or in 1890 showed that 91% were glad they served their country. 89% agreed with the statement, our troops were asked to fight in a war which our political leaders in Washington would not let them win. In truth, the Vietnam generation is a misnomer. The sizable portion of the Vietnam age group who refused to participate in the protests, and especially those who volunteered to serve in the military during the Vietnam War, are quite different from their peers who for decades have, for decades have exclaimed to speak for them, for them. For men in uniform, this war represented not a war of words or politics, but a battlefield that was just as brutal as those their fathers faced in World War II and Korea. It was the most costly war the U.S. Marine Corps has ever fought. Five times as many dead in World War II, three times as many dead in Korea, and more than total killed and wounded than all of World War II. The severe criticism they received was not from World War II generation, but from the elites in their age group who supposedly spoke for them. The baby boom generation was cracked apart along class lines as America's young men who were di making difficult life or death choices about serving. Nine million men served in the military during the Vietnam War. Two thirds of these were volunteers and 73% of those who died were volunteers. And yet, the better academic institutions became focal points for bitter protest against war, with few of their graduates going into the military. Harvard College, which had lost 691 alumni in World War II, lost a total of 12 men in Vietnam from the classes of 1967 through 1972 combined. Those classes at Princeton lost six, MIT two. As James, Webb, as James Webb recalls those days, he remembers the very young men who spent time with him. He was continually amazed, for these were mostly recent civilians, barely out of high school, called up from the cities and farms to do their year in hell and then return. He remembers how brave they were and how uncomplaining most of them were in the face of constant danger. The salty, battle-hardened 20-year-olds teaching green 19-year-olds the complicated lessons that hostile, of that hostile battlefield. The strong character in the young squad leaders that displayed flawless skill of moving through uncharted territory. The the quick certainty with which they moved when coming under fire and the situation tenderness when a fellow soldier was wounded and needed help. To this day, it stuns James Webb that their own countrymen have so completely missed the story of their service, lost in bitter confusion of, it, of the war itself. The heroes of the Vietnam War are men that face the issues of war and possible death and when weighing those concerns against obligations of their country. Citizen soldiers who interrupted their personal and professional lives at the cost of lives at their most formative stage in the timeless phrase of the Confederate Memorial in, in Arlington National Cemetery, not for fame or reward, not for place or for rank, but in simple obedience to duty as they understood it. Thank you, Vietnam veterans, for your service. Thank you, Sarah.
Audubon High School student Jonah Kitt is the son of David and Sean Kitt and great-grandson of Vint and Phyllis Jensen of Audubon. Vint was a B-25 pilot in the Pacific Theater during World War II. Jonah will now share the poem, 50,000 Names Carved in the Wall. Fifty Thousand Names Carved in, Carved in the Wall by George George Jones, written in 1997. There's teddy bears and high school rings, and old photographs that mama mamas bring, of daddies with their young boy playing ball. Their combat boots he used to wear when he was sent over there, and there's fifty thousand plus names carved in the wall. There's cigarettes and cans of beer, and notes that say I miss you, dear. And children who don't say anything at all, there's purple hearts and, pack and packs of gum. Fatherless daughters and fatherless sons. And there's 50,000 plus names carved in the wall. They come from all across this land in pickup trucks and minivans. Searching for a boy from long ago, they scan the wall and find his name. Their teardrops fall like pouring rain, and silently they leave, get, leave a gift and go. There's stars of David and rosary beads and crucifixion figurines and flowers of all colors, large and small. There's a boy scout badge and a merit pin, little American flags waving in the wind, and there's 50,000 plus names carved in the wall. Thank you, Jonah. And I, I think those were the words of the possum, right? George Jones? Joe Bean has been a great supporter of our annual Ottoman County Salutes Its Veterans program and is back again to support the veterans this year. Joe, along with David Gravy, the drummer, who's a repeat supporter of our veterans, um, Army veteran Jim Christensen, Molly Armentrout, Kyle Paulson, and Tyree Vogt, um, Tyree's mother, Cindy, is, I can't tell exactly how many years she's been in, but, uh, in the guard, but I'll tell you it's over 30. <laughs> so, uh, the group will be playing the Battle Hymn of the Republic and God Bless the USA. And a couple of notes here. It's customary when the words, and I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today, that those who are in fact willing to stand up and support and defend our country do stand up. Um, the second thing is um, I request that all veterans um, after the end of the Battle Hymn of the Republic move over to the uh, right where Duane is, the Patriot Guard on that side and form two columns. Um, so, and the purpose of that is uh, we're going to have a veteran who's going to show his patriotism and, and uh, there'll be a flag moving through the crowd and it'll come back through the veterans there. So. Uh, um, Yes, we're up to, to Joe and company. Thank you. Thank you, John. And I want to thank Margie for asking us um, a little bit about the kids here. Kyle um, just recently joined up with um, our praise band team. That's where some of these kids come from. Um, our Savior's Lutheran Church sponsors it. Um, Molly Armantrout. Um, Tyree belongs in the um, praise band, and David is a future praise band member. So, And then, of course, my good friend Jim Christensen. I want to thank him for coming over here from Newton, Iowa. <laughs> All right. And please feel free to sing on these songs if you want to, okay? All right. Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has lost the faithful lighting of his terrible sword. His truth is marching on. The 
trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is swift, he doth the hearts from men before his judgment seat. Oh, he swift, my soul to answer him, be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. If tomorrow the things were gone I'd work for all my life And I had to start again With just my children and my wife I thank my God above And to be living here today Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away And I'm proud to be an American Where at least I know I'm free And I won't forget the man who died And who gave that right to me And I gladly stand up next to you And defend her still today Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land God bless the USA From the lakes of Minnesota To the hills of Tennessee From sea to shining sea Hey, 
do we have a patriotic crowd here? Do you see all those veterans? Yeah. Boy, oh boy. Yeah. So when they say, thank a veteran when you see him, um, there's a lot of folks out there that uh, I think we just turn around and we can thank them. So thanks for your service. Thanks, Joe, Jim, David, Molly, Kyle, and Tyree. Great job. Appreciate it. I want to do a little recap of the, of the past four days. We've had the honor of having the wall that heals in Audubon County. It was a moving experience from the beginning with the arrival of the wall that heals, escorted by the Patriot Guard writers and our local emergency responders. We've witnessed hugging, tears, groups of veterans who started conversations in the sunlight and were in the same place after the sun went down where their presence could be seen in the shadows near the wall. The wall brought us a vivid reminder that more than 58,000 servicemen and women made the ultimate sacrifice serving their country in Vietnam. Let me read an expert excerpt from the wall website. Bringing the, the wall home to communities throughout our country allows the souls enshrined on the memorial to exist once more among family and friends in the peace and comfort of familiar surroundings. It allows the many thousands of veterans who have been unable to cope with the prospect of facing the wall to find the strength and courage to do so within their own communities, thus allowing the healing process to begin. Did the wall have the advertised effect? Did the wall begin or advance the healing among our veterans this weekend? I believe the only answer is a resounding yes. Our Vietnam veteran speakers, Charlie Wheeler, Major General Jack Peppers, Dennis Stephenson, Steve Cox, and Lieutenant Colonel Ferguson shared Vietnam War history, their personal thoughts and fears, giving us a glimpse of their service in Vietnam. For us who were not there, the glimpse they, they provided may be recorded in some minds as a few moments of information while for many of our Vietnam veterans, their experiences play back repeatedly in their minds over their entire lifetime. Please try to fathom that. The effort to bring the wall here was a phenomenal effort for our small county and was made possible through the support of the people and businesses who call Audubon County home. I ask for the following to stand. Those that were on the Wall That Heals Committee or who attended committee meetings. Those who escorted the wall on its journey to Ottoman County. Those who gave resource support, including financial donations, in-kind support. Those who volunteered during the past four days to erect the wall, provide security, information assistance, guides to the wall, our clergy, film crew, our musicians, singers, and speakers. As you can see, it was a true community effort. Thank you. And we can't forget Bob and Brenda Dobek, who brought us the wall. Bob is a Vietnam veteran. Bob, thank you. Thanks, Bob and Brenda. Yep. 
I'm 100% convinced that the wall will not be here if not for the outstanding efforts, dedication, and perseverance of Margie Schaefer. Margie did the research and waded through. Yep. Margie did the research and waded through the different Vietnam Memorial options, the costs. She pounded the pavement. She was promotions, purchasing, fundraising, and the head question answerer. In military terms, Margie was certainly a hard charger. In recognition of her efforts, we have a small token of our gratitude to her. Margie, are you here or did, are you, uh, did you take off somewhere? <laughs> We, we have a card here that's signed by many veterans and, uh, and folks here in Ottoman. And what it says is, Margie, without your dedication and tireless efforts, the visit to Ottoman County by the wall that heals would not have become a reality. Your enthusiastic involvement enabled the healing process to begin for veterans who attended this weekend's events. Thank you, Margie. We, we did have a, another idea for a gift. Instead of the bouquet, we had planned to present Margie with the keys to a 2014 Dodge Charger. <laughs> but then we were made aware that she doesn't like Dodge cars, so we kind of scrapped that one. <laughs> I ask that all Vietnam veterans stand to allow us to present you with that welcome home and show of gratitude and appreciation for the huge sacrifices you made in your service to our country in Vietnam. The gratitude and appreciation America truly owed you that you may not, that may not have been expressed to you upon your return. Thank you, Vietnam veterans. Pastor Glenn Myers, pastor of the Exira Christian Church, will now lead us in a closing prayer. Lord God, we have been privileged during these past four days to remember to remember all of those whose names are on the wall to remember the sacrifices that they made in a faraway place for reasons that many did not and do not understand. But we remember that with bravery and courage, they did what they were called upon to do. And for that, we honor them. During this four days, our thoughts have turned many times to all those affected by the Vietnam War and those who served, to the families of those whose names are on that wall, to their comrades who served with them, to those whose names are still on the list of the MIAs, and their families. For those who served in ways that we cannot even begin to fathom. We pray 
that the healing that has begun would continue. That we can lay aside all of the feelings and turmoil of those days and that we can indeed say thank you God bless you rest in peace be healed and be well for we recognize that in addition to those many who died, many were wounded in visible ways, and many were wounded in invisible ways, in their inner souls and spirits. We do pray for healing. We pray that we might reach out our hands to one another to support, to stand with, and to walk with each one of them. And as the healing from that time continues, and as we process the lessons of that struggle, we pause to pray for those who have fought and are even now fighting in other wars. We pray that the mistakes that we made in welcoming home and supporting our Vietnam veterans will not be repeated. And as our President and as our Congress prepares to consider military action again, we pray for wisdom. We pray for the direction of your spirit that all concerned would be mindful of the cost that others must pay for the decisions that they make. We thank you for those who serve, who will carry out whatever orders they are given, as we thank you for those that we witnessed in our veterans' lines who have served in so many different places and in so many different ways. We just ask, Lord, that your spirit be upon them, that your peace fill each one, that healing and wholeness would come through your grace and through your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Amen.